I am very pleased today to be hosting the Prime Minister of Ukraine, Denis Shmihal, here in Toronto. Mr. Freeland, thank you for your words. Uh, Minister Anand, great to see you. Uh, as well as uh, a number of our strong uh, MPs with great Ukrainian communities, uh, Julie Zerowitz, Arif Varani, James Maloney, and of course, Ivan Baker. Uh, good to see you, Alexandra, President of the uh, U uh, Ukrainian Canadian Congress, uh, Ambassador, and other uh, dear friends. Ce matin, this morning, I took the opportunity to reiterate our support to Ukrainians against Russia's brutal invasion. We will continue to be there to support them as long as necessary. Canada will always be there to defend our values, like democracy and the rules-based international order. For more than a year now, Canada has been helping Ukrainians defend themselves by sending military assistance, including tanks and armored vehicles, ammunition, weapons, and other equipment. Today, we're announcing we'll be sending even more weapons. Sourced from Colt Canada, we'll be sending 21,000 assault rifles, 38 machine guns, and over 2.4 million rounds of ammunition. This will help the armed forces of Ukraine continue to defend their freedom and fight for Ukraine's territorial integrity. Something Prime Minister Shmihal and I discussed today was also the financial situation of his country and the efforts to rebuild Ukraine, to support essential services, including pension payments, purchasing fuel, and restoring ja damaged energy infrastructure. Canada has now dispersed a $2.4 billion loan announced in our budget 2023. On a, on a aussi parlé des we also talked about the reconstruction efforts, and we will continue to do so this afternoon with Canadian business leaders to see how the private sector can contribute. We also signed a youth mobility agreement for youth in both of our countries. When Russian troops have left Ukraine and the situation is safe, our youth will be able to visit and work in Canada and Ukraine. That is a measure which will enable both of our populations to come even closer. Another thing that will continue to bring our two countries closer is trade. That's why I was so glad uh, to sit down with Denis, Dennis uh, and uh, sign a joint declaration on the conclusion of negotiations for the modernization of the Canada-Ukraine Free Trade Agreement. It is uh, a um, comprehensive and very very strong agreement that I know will be a model for the kind of uh, strong engagement uh, that Ukraine uh, can and will have, not just with Canada, but around the world as well. And we're privileged to be, uh, once again, an early friend on that. We're both deeply committed to implement it as soon as possible. It'll strengthen our trade ties and help support Ukraine's economic recovery, not just with Canada, but with the world. Canada has a lot to offer whether it's skilled workers, technological expertise, or natural resources. I know that during uh, Prime Minister Shmihal's visit, the Saskatoon-based company Cameco signed a major con supply contract with Energoatom in Ukraine, building on their partnership agreement. Cameco will provide the necessary uranium to meet nuclear, uh, U Ukraine's nuclear fuel needs uh, until 2035 which will help Ukraine keep the lights on while creating and supporting good middle-class jobs here in Canada. Une autre manière importante de soutenir le... Another important way to support Ukraine is to hold Russia responsible for its actions. Canada has now imposed sanctions on more than 2,400 individuals and entities in Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus. And today, we are announcing new sanctions. Maintain the pressure on the Russian regime. We're announcing new sanctions on 14 Russian individuals and 34 entities, including security targets linked to the Wagner Group. In addition to further Putin pressure, to further pressure Putin's enablers in Belarus, we're announcing additional sanctions on nine entities related to the Belarusian financial sector. Denis, thank you again for your visit, my friend. Canada will continue to be steadfast in our support of Ukraine as you defend yourselves heroically against 
Putin's brutal, barbaric invasion. The courage of Ukrainians is heroic. But as you well know, Denis, you are standing up for more than just <clears throat> the values and the principles that Ukrainians hold dear. You are standing up for the values and principles that underpin all of our freedoms and all of our democracies. And it is an extraordinary pleasure and privilege uh, to be able to stand with you right now, as we have for many years, as we will long into the future. Canadians stand with you and always will.